I'm going to do an exercise for American Mahjong using the National Mahjong League card. I call this exercise Charleston Modeling. The purpose is to practice decision-making through the Charleston. This is the pre-game hand development accelerator. If you're new to Mahjong, or if you already know how to play and just want to build your skills, consider subscribing to my channel. That way you won't miss anything. We're going to do this three times and we'll alternate between dealer. We'll get 14 tiles, then 13, and then 14, and I'll create a mock Charleston with no jokers for each one. We have a joker, pair of flowers, east and south, red dragon, one, three, seven, eight in dots, two, seven in bams, six, seven in cracks. If these were your tiles, what would you focus on and what would be your first pass? These were my tiles. The first thing I would notice is that we have a pair of flowers. So whatever we play, we're gonna use those flowers. The rest of the tiles are singles. So I look for like numbers. And that shows me a predominant pattern. We have seven, 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 eight, six, seven, six, seven, eight. So six, seven, eight would be the predominant pattern. Three sevens and then supporting tiles. I would probably keep the wins because we could maybe play like numbers with sevens and news. So I would discard those first. Focus on six, seven, eight of some kind or like numbers with sevens and news. Let's pass these three and see what happens. We've got a six. There's a white dragon that does correspond, but we can't use this with six, seven, eight, and flowers. So do we pass it? It's a little bit risky. I think what I would do, we have six, seven, six, seven, sevens. I think to give us the best possibility, I would think about passing that white dragon, however, we have a corresponding tile, the dots with white dragons, and we have a four, which is a year tile. I don't think I would do that. I think I would give something up here. We have six, seven, eight. So I think what I would do is either let a wind go or the six. Since number tiles are far more flexible, I would let the winds go. We could still play like numbers with sevens and flowers without the winds. So I would keep that dragon and pass these three. Wow, I really hope nobody would ever pass something like that. It does happen though. So now we have five, six, seven, six, seven, six, seven, eight, and flowers. We have two tiles to pass and I would consider passing that white dragon. Here we have six, seven, six, seven, eight concealed, but we would not be able to use the flowers. I think what I would do here, let's see here with the flowers, I would wanna to try to use those. We could maybe play six, seven, eight, use that multiple. 
Anytime a multiple forms in the Charleston, you want to target that. We could maybe do five, six, seven, or like numbers with sixes. We didn't use the seven dot. Uh, let's, yeah, the seven dot was not used in any of those options. And we can't keep it all. Now we could pass blind, but I don't think I would because we're already in between like numbers with sixes, five, six, seven in one suit and six, seven, eight in two suits. That's three hands. That's enough options, I think. So I'd rather pass fully and let the seven dot go and keep going. We got a, a seven and a five. So here's five, six, seven, two multiples. We also have six, seven, eight. So there's two hands using multiples. Six bam, seven crack, eight dot, or five, six, seven in one suit. So I would let these go but I would not pass like numbers. So I would let something go here. Five, six, seven. Let's see. Five, six, seven, six, seven. Hmm. We do have six, seven, six, seven, eight concealed, but we'd have to throw away a pair of flowers. So I think this is a six, one, half dozen, the other situation. I think I would give up the eight, use this for joker bait and focus on five, six, seven in one suit. So we could keep going. Now the green dragon, it does correspond, but not using the flowers. The dragon hands don't have flowers in consecutive run. So I would not use that. No keepers. We're focused on the flowers and these two multiples. No keepers. I would just let those go. Although that is a little bit risky, eight, nine. Maybe we could pass the six, three, six, eight, instead of eight, nine. At least there's a gap in there. Try to mitigate the risk. Okay, east and west. We have a pair of flowers, five, six. I would not focus on that at all. I would not be distracted. I'd pass these three. It's a little risky, but I'm hoping maybe someone changed their hand. I know there's no tile in here for us, but it's just a good idea to keep going if you can and pass fully when you can. So we have four discards, a hand with no gaps, and a joker with joker bait right here. We might be able to get a joker out of that. If you don't know about joker bait, this is a strategy where you hold a pair you don't need, and then in the middle of the game, you discard one to coax an exposure from an opponent and then use the second one to do the joker exchange on your next turn. It's a hit or miss strategy, but it is a lot of fun when it works. This was a, a strategy coined by Tom Sloper of Sloperama. Okay, that's what I would do. If you would have done something differently with these tiles, write it in the comment section below with poll one. We have a joker, pair of flowers, east, two, four, six, eight in dots, four, five in bams, pair of five, three, four in cracks. If these were your tiles, what would you focus on and what would be your first pass? If these were my tiles, I'd start right here, five bam and the flowers. So whatever I play, I would use these. 
So with the rest of my tiles, that means consecutive. So I would play some kind of three, four, five, six, four, five, three, four, five, six. That is a little bit risky. We have four, five, three, four, five, four, six. I think no matter how we slice that, it's going to be risky. Let's see here. Four dot, four, five, three, four, five. I think that's how I would do it. I was thinking maybe we could let the four dot go, but then passing a two four would be very risky. We could maybe pass that and it'd be a little bit better. Not by much though. So we have four, five, three, four, six. We do have a hand in here. Four crack, five, bam, six dot. Mixu Kongs. Let's see what happens. Three crack, wow, six dot. Okay, here's three, four, four, five, six. We have two discards. So if we use the flower, we have three, four, five, four, five, six. I think I would let this four bam go and see what happens. We want to use the flowers. Let's see here, three, four. Okay, here we go. We have a five, seven. There's a nine crack. A little bit of big odds came in, but not much. Now here, though, we have some three, six, nine peeking in. Three, six, three, nine. Let's see here, three, six, nine. That three crack pair, though, really is not helpful, I don't think. Let's see, if we do three, six, three, nine, flowers, let the five go. Three, six, nine, three, six, nine with flowers, two threes. That's really not very helpful. There is the Mixu Kong hand though. So maybe what we could do, if we do three crack six dot nine bam, which we don't have, we could still maybe play though a hand with no gaps right here, four, five, six. That's what I would opt for. I think I would let the three dot go. That's a little bit risky, but we have a hand here with no gaps using three multiples. This maybe could be joker bait, but you don't really want to focus on joker bait during the Charleston. It can be an encumbrance, especially if that means a risky pass. But here, it's arbitrary which one we would pass, the three crack or the three dot. At least this is one of each suit. Okay, so let's pass this. We got the three dot. Okay, so now look, we have a we have an option. Five, six, seven, or four, five, six. Now here we have like numbers. We're doing we went right across left, so we're on second left. I would definitely keep going. We have options. Since we have a seven there, I think I would let the four go and pass one of each suit and keep the seven, five, six, seven, and pass safely. Okay, now here is a six, seven, and a five, six. So we have five, five, six, six, seven. I always keep four numbers in a range around my multiples. So here, four, five, six, seven, even though we have no four, we could do five, six, seven. Here's that hand. Five, bam, six, dot, seven, crack. We have one discard. We can break up the three, and then we'd have to let something go. So this is where you would look at the hands and pick the best one. And I think, let's see here. 
we do have sixes with a wind. I think that's just spreading ourselves too thin though. I think what I would do here is let the five dot go because we have that hand in here with no gaps, five, six, seven. Okay, here we go. No keepers, eight, nine with a two. Two, eight, and two suits. Two, three, eight, nine. At least it's on the edge. Five, six, six, seven. The eight is in our range, five, six, seven, eight. But we have five, bam, six, dot. We still have this hand with no gaps. That's what I would focus on. Whoa, we just got a pair of threes. Oh my goodness, that, that's crazy. It does happen. Uh, let's see. So we have three, five. That's really not helpful though. Three, five, we can pass this dragon. So pair threes, this could be joker bait. So I think what I would do is let the six go and see what we can get out of here. I don't think there's anything in here for us. Seven, eight. That's not very helpful though, without a six band really. So we have three discards and joker bait and a hand with no gaps. I think that was a pretty good Charleston. I would say we'd be a contender on this one. We have our pair. We could Kong one of these. We would need to, of course, draw well, which is true for every hand anyway. If you would have done something differently with these tiles, write it in the comment section below with pull two. We have a green dragon, white dragon, pair south. Two, five, seven, nine in dots. Two, five in cracks. Two, three, seven, nine in bams. If these were your tiles, what would you focus on and what would be your first pass? these were my tiles, I would think about keeping the south. Without a north, the south is useless unless we play a quint, but we have no jokers. I would probably let the dragons go. We have two fives, two sevens, and two nines. That reveals a predominant pattern of big odds. So I would keep big odds and let those go big odds, or something with a south if north comes in. So we can pass, let's say, two, three, dragon. A little bit risky, but we need to maximize our potential to develop a hand here. We got a nine crack. Still no multiple with a number tile. We're gonna keep going. Here's a two, oh boy, twos, four. Oh my gosh, this would be super risky. Your hand. <laughs> I would not, let's see, oh my gosh, let's see. We have like numbers with nines in here. Five, I think I would break that up. Let's see here. Five, seven, seven, nine, south. Like numbers with nines, like numbers with sevens. Oh, maybe we could do two, five, dragon, two, five, dragon. Let's see what happens here. Okay, now there's our multiple, seven, bam. Here's a six, six, seven, five through nine, no eight. We have big odds in here. So I'd probably let that go. Wins, no wins other than what we started with. 
Here's a hand with no gaps. Five, seven, seven, nine. We have three tiles to pass, one of each suit. I think what I would do is break up the two four in one suit. Either way, it's going to be risky if that is part of our next pass. Plus, here's all evens. Let's stick with that. We got a five. Oh, there's a north. North and south. Oh my goodness, look, we got we got fours. There's only one way to use fours with sevens in mixed suits. Four, five, six, seven. We have no six fan, although it is in there. I would let that two go. So we have five, seven dot, seven, nine bam, pair seven, pair four, no six, four, five, six bam, seven. I think what I would do is let the nine go. I kind of wish we had jokers. We could play a quint. We could still maybe try for it. Let's see, maybe, hmm, we either give up a five or a wind. The north and south, third hand down uses, let's see here, consecutive offsuit Kongs. I was thinking too, maybe we could play the concealed hand and play like numbers with sevens. I think we should let this five dot go. Oh, sixes. Okay. That two can go. So we have, oops, four, five, six. How about four, five, six with north and south? Runs with new or north and south? I think I would still keep that seven. This nine band can go. Maybe that six dot can go. Let's see, north and south with four, north and south with a six, north and south with six and seven. So maybe we can let the seven dot go. All right, we've got lots of options in here. There's a six crack. I think I would play four, five, six with north and south. Use the sevens as joker bait. So now here, pass two, seven, nine. Oh, flower. It's not really very helpful though. Okay, so here we have three tossed pass. This is joker bait. We could play four, five, six Kongs in consecutive run. Let's see if we can get that six, let's see. Well, we were thinking about four, five, six, bam, seven. It is in here. Sometimes you get a tile back. We did not, but we did get a five. Oh yeah, I would totally focus on north and south with a run. Four, five, six, joker bait. Two discard, three discards, we don't need the flower. Unless four, five, six comes in, I think I would still keep it. So we have two hands, no gaps, two discards with joker bait. I would say we'd be a contender until we pick a hand, but you really don't have to pick a hand until you run out of discards. Or until one of your tiles is discarded because the Charleston is over now. We start the real game when East discards that first tile. One of our tiles could go down if we're ready. We could maybe Kong North South. We need to draw though. It's not very helpful. If these tiles go down in the begin game, requiring us to then use jokers, I'd probably switch to the Kong hand with flowers and let those go. Use this as joker bait. 
so it's really it would really depend on what tiles go down in the first like five rounds of discards to decide whether or not to play north and south with a run or five, uh, four, five, six with flowers under consecutive run. If you would have done anything differently with these tiles, write it in the comment section below with poll three. You've got to focus on the strength of the hand. Organize your tiles in some fashion and then look for the strength of the hand. If you have multiple, start there. Using as many tiles as you can, choose a category that uses most of your tiles supporting the multiple and then gather. If you don't have a multiple, choose the predominant pattern, which will match one of the categories on the card. During the Charleston, if a multiple forms, target the multiple, reassess, and find a category that uses most of your tiles for that newly developed multiple. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click that little gray bell if you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next video, may all your picks be keepers. Thank <laughs> you.